In this video, we'll go through every single weapon, armor, and gear choice available to obtain for your Grey Knights in Warhammer 40,000 Chaos Gate Demon Hunters. This video showcases every single Grey Knight item currently in the game. It does not include assassin items or tech marine items. In each section, I'll try to point out the best in-slot gear, as well as any items with unique properties that I think could be useful for certain builds. Although higher tier gear is generally more powerful, there are many cases where there's tier one or two gear that has unique properties that are not available in a higher tier version of the gear. Starting from day 30 at your first Grandmaster report, you'll be able to unlock rank one access. And every 60 days after that, you'll be able to increase the rank of your access. Until you unlock rank four access, you won't have access to all three tiers of gear. Rank four gives you medium chance for tier one, high chance for tier two, and medium chance for tier three. Unlocking rank four access as fast as possible is probably a good idea, but if there's a specific tier one piece of gear that you want, don't advance to rank five as you'll lose access to tier one rewards. I've added chapters so you can jump straight to the specific gear section that you want to look at. The Conciliator, when fully upgraded, gives double XP for leveling up new knights. Weeping Blade is great for a crit build interceptor with plus 70 crit chance and plus five damage on crit. The Stoic's Blade is the ultimate parry sword, giving you 200% parries per turn. The tier one Scorn Halberd allows you to do melee AOE blasts. Endbringer is one of the best weapons in the game for execute setups. Four strikes can do three stun in one hit. And if the knight executes a target, they gain back three action points instead of just one. Titan's Wrath has a 100% chance to hit up to two targets that move adjacent to the knights, and you can use this weapon to knock enemies off ledges. Condemnation is an amazing tier one set of falchions that can deliver reliable crits with plus 65% crit on a four strike. If you do crit, it also has a 25% chance to give you an extra action point once per turn. You can increase the number of autos per turn and the chance for it to proc with other gear and skills. Conviction and Ogun's Edict give even more crit chance and higher damage, but they don't have the action point refund auto. The tier one mercy hammer can deliver plus two stun so it's great for stun execute builds. Upgraded you can also knock back to punt enemies off cliffs. Tier two blessing of faith can deliver plus three stun and also has the knockback upgrade. Warpbreaker can do six damage or nine on a crit over a huge area and silences targets. The Rod of Herakus has 75% chance to activate your Aegis Shield at the end of your turn without you having to spend any action points. The Rod of the Ancients has 100% chance to activate and increases your Aegis Shield armor by plus two. Kai's Evoker only has a base 25% for the Aegis Shield auto to proc, but it has plus 35 focus, which increases not just your chance for your Aegis Shield to proc, but for all of your autos to proc. So this is great for any build focused on autos. The Stave of Supremacy can give plus four maximum willpower, great for librarians. The Triumph of Glory is a great Crozier for Chaplain Execute builds. When the Chaplain executes a target, all knights gain plus one willpower in addition to the plus one action points they would normally gain. Manifest Word is another great Crozier for Execute builds. When the Chaplain executes a target, as well as the plus one action points that all knights get, the chaplain can get an extra plus two action points. Hammer of the Righteous removes the willpower upkeep for litanies. Ulmer's Salve is great for buff apothecaries. All their biomancy buffs last for one extra turn. Life Giver can heal a massive 8 HP with Battlefield Medicine and also makes your Biomancies last an extra turn. Levan's All has a 65% chance to purge all mutations from a target. Could be useful if you have an enemy with problematic mutations and you don't have a Purifier. The Soul Flare is a great tier 1 Storm Bolter that you can use for setting up stun execution builds. It has plus 2 stun, so it's a total of 3 stun per shot. If you get the right angle and the target's behind cover, you can make it so that you only do 1 or 2 damage per shot. So you and deliver the maximum amount of stun without killing the enemy. The Liberator is great for bleed setups. It's capable of adding plus four bleed per shot. So potentially you could get 12 bleed, which would do 12 plus 11 plus 10 plus nine plus eight plus seven, etc. bleed over a number of turns. Emancipator has an auto with 50% chance to return one action point whenever you get a ranged crit. The Soul Hammer is the ultimate support weapon for setting up stun executes. It's able to add plus three stun per shot. 
This is tier, I think, is the highest damage storm bolter in the game. Able to do nine damage in a single shot and on a crit. Bone Blight can deal eight damage per shot and pierce armor. Talion Spite is the ultimate Overwatch storm bolter. Overwatch has plus two range and plus three damage per Overwatch shot. Hostate's Woe is capable of precision targeting. This means if you crit, you can crit off the enemy's arms or collect seeds from range. Sinflare afflicts plus three bleed and you can afflict it in AoE. Retribution does plus two damage on Overwatch. Elrin's Oath deals eight base damage, 10 on a crit. Titan's Roar can get plus four range and deal six damage in an AoE. Sanction can do plus two stun in an AoE. Revelation has armor piercing by default. Doom's End inflicts plus three bleed per shot, has a long range of 17. Titan's Vengeance deals seven damage per shot, nine on a crit. Victory's Testament has extreme range of 20, and its scatter shot has plus three range also, increasing the AoE. The Hell Scorcher has a higher base damage and can be upgraded to deal an additional plus one damage per one ammo on top of the normal Flames of Purity plus one per two ammo. Piety's Ashes, when upgraded, has seven base damage and also has the plus one damage per one ammo upgrade for Flames of Purity. Mirror of Judgment is the ultimate Harry Tank Defender Shield gives plus three armor, an additional plus three armor when entering defend position, which is the Paladin's AoE melee overwatch ability, and you get 100% chance to parry up to two attacks per turn. There are a lot of different powered armors available in the game, and you can get some useful properties on tier one and two armors, but generally there's a more powerful version. So I'm just going to talk about the best in slot tier three versions of these armors. Keeper of the Flame is the best grenade powered armor. Grenades have plus three damage, plus six range, and plus one ammo for grenades, which stacks with other plus ammo that you can get in skill tree and traits. Prodigy's Mantle gives plus three ammo and plus four range to servo skulls. Cantu's Van Brace is one of the coolest powered armors in the game. It gives plus one movement speed, plus four HP, plus 15% focus, and it gives you plus one action point per turn. A lot of powered armors give plus movement, but Judgment's Refuge gives a massive plus three move speed. It also makes you immune to ground hazards like fire and plague. There's a number of powered armors that grant you an additional passive war gear slot, but Champion's Plate also gives you a massive plus 12 hit points and plus one armor. Titan's Aegis also gives you a passive war gear slot and plus four hit points, but gives you plus three armor, more than basic Terminator armor. Anvil's Refuge is a Terminator armor with plus two move speed. Warp Swarm is a good armor for librarians, giving plus three willpower, and it does not increase warp surge when using psychic abilities. The Mantle of the Flame gives plus two grenade ammo, and grenades have plus two area. Note, Purgators can't wear Terminator armor, but this is great for just cards as well. Mantle of the Elect gives plus two damage to four strikes with melee weapons. The Gold Carapace gives an extra passive war gear slot. Keeper of the Faith, plus two grenade ammo and plus two grenade area, but it has plus four armor and plus three max health. Morning Plate is the best in slot apothecary armor, as even if their willpower gets to zero, they can keep using their abilities, spending health instead of willpower, then just heal themselves back up. Scholar's Devotion gives a massive plus five willpower. Each weapon or piece of armor that you collect is a unique item that can only be equipped on one of your knights at a time. War gear is a little bit different. Once you've unlocked a particular rank of a grenade, servo skull, or piece of equipment, you have an unlimited number of that war gear to equip on as many of your knights as you wish, although you can't equip duplicates of the same piece of war gear on the same knight. Tier one frag grenades deal three damage and knockback, allowing you to knock enemies off ledges. You will eventually want to replace the tier one and tier two frag grenades with the tier three frag grenades, which still has the knockback, but deals seven base damage. Technically, it's more cost effective to skip the tier two frag grenades and save the requisition since you're going to replace them with the tier three eventually anyway. However, upgraded frags are so useful, I'd probably grab them if they come up as a reward, as you don't know when the tier three frags are going to come up for you. Crack grenades are a special grenade to permanently strip armor from the enemy. Blind grenades completely nullify low level enemies incoming range damage. Empyrean brain mines are stun grenades. Extremely high priority if you're going for a stun execute build, but not really useful unless you're specifically going for a stun build. Rad grenades stack bleed damage, especially useful if you have other sources of bleed damage to stack with it. The Apothecarian Servo Skull is only available to the Apothecary and is unlocked through their skill tree. The Seed Extractor Servo Skull is only available after being unlocked through research. The Seeker Skull reveals enemy pods with 
without activating them and afflicts them with vulnerable. So your follow-up attacks will do extra damage. This also allows you to target the pod with other ranged attacks like the Apothecary's AOE Bleed. The Medicaid Skull heals and purifies afflictions from allies at range. Note that you can equip this on a non-Apothecary to give you a heal even if you don't have an Apothecary in your squad. Aila's Skull is a decoy you can use to draw enemies away from your knights. Disruptor Skulls also do armor-piercing damage from range. As Servo Skulls don't use any action points, you can unload all of your ammo in a single turn. With Prodigy's Mantle and maxed out skills, an Apothecary could have 9 Servo Skull ammo for their Disruptor Skull. Like grenades and servo skulls, most tier 1 equipment will eventually be replaced with a tier 3 version. So if you're short on requisition, you can save points by skipping most of the tier 1 and tier 2 items. There are two unique items that only have a tier 1 version. The Artisan Nullifier Matrix grants plus 3 armor on Aegis Shield, and the Purity Seal of Precision grants plus 2 range for ranged weapons. Equipment are passive buff items, especially good if the Knight has one or two additional passive war gear slots, or they have a specific build that relies on a particular stat. Blessed Greaves give plus 35 crit chance for all ranged attacks. Augurium Scrolls give plus 20% crit for melee attacks. Sacred Incense is the most universally useful with plus 6 willpower. This is another item I'd recommend grabbing at tier 2 if it's available. Extended Magazine tier 3, somewhat useful for all knights but particularly for flamer builds that do extra damage per ammo spent. And that is every Grey Knight item in the game. If you know any killer item combos that I didn't mention, let me know in the comments. I hope this helps you out with planning your builds. Good luck kicking doors in Chaos Gate.